don't think back at the start of this year anyone could really imagine how it was going to be. We had our strategy sessions back in January and we're thinking about how 2020 was going to turn out. Never once did we think about the litres of alcohol we were going to consume with our hands, the, the number of face masks that we would take out, the, the amount of time we wouldn't get to see our friends and family. And, and, and so 2020 has been massively different for everybody. For us though, as a, as a technology business, we adapted really quickly to the whole situation of working from home. Padme is the UK's leading mobile first digital agency. We're just short of 200 people. We've been going now for 11 years uh, and we've got a, a large and growing client base where we help people make mobile apps and the backend system integrations that deliver those. So everything from uh, working with clients such as Argos through to working with people such as the NHS on building world leading mobile and back-end systems that make things better for end users. I came up for the idea for a Padme quite a long time ago and pitched it to three friends about how we could build a different business and I think we've delivered on that you know we wanted to build a business that that cared a lot about its people but also cared a lot about clients and making great products. And to me, it's really important that we build the best possible solution that we can do for people that, that really helps make a difference for, for the end users uh, and just build world-class products. That's what we really like doing. So for me, it's very emotional uh, that it's, it's part of who I am and, and what we want to deliver and what we want to do for people. We have always allowed people to work from home, but whereas the norm was people could work from home one day a week or two days a week to, to, to alleviate travel and other things or just make it easier for themselves in, in, in the working from home environment, the whole emphasis has now changed that it's now unusual to come into the office. Everybody's working from home. We're in an amazing office that we've, we've had refurbed this year that's got room for for everybody to be in but most of the people have probably spent two weeks in here before we closed it because we closed the office early you know the government announced the the national lockdown but we'd already sent everybody home a, a week or so beforehand to, to to try and reduce the mingling within our own office space what has it meant for all of us well we all had access to technology with cloud these days every single person in the business has a laptop every single person can have access to a monitor at home, can have keyboards, mice and all the rest of it to make a real nice working environment in their, their home or home office if they have one. And we just have collaborated more. We've been used to using collaboration tools like Google Meet, Zoom and Microsoft Teams for, for several years now. And this just became the natural extension where previously there were more people in the room than what were on Teams. Now there's nobody in the room and everybody's on Teams. And that's, that's a a difference that we adapted to quite quickly. How has it impacted how we work? Well, it's empowered some people to have more time at home, more time with friends, family, that extra, whether it's an hour or two hours commute that they might have been doing before, they don't have. That commute down the stairs is usually just that little bit shorter where they can then just go straight to, to, to work and have more time to do other things. So that's nice in some ways, and we expect that to continue. We're not asking everybody to come back into the office. We see that offices will have changed for the future forever, for, for, for good. It's enabled a lot of our clients to get used to uh, working remotely. And, and as a business, it's allowed us to take on client relationships that might have been a little bit more, either more difficult or, or more time consuming in the past. Traveling for four hours for a one hour meeting is now no longer a thing. We, we basically jump on a call and can have many more meetings in a day. So this year the, the challenges and the, have meant that we've been really flexible with, with everybody and tried to be really supportive with, with all staff. So earlier on in the year when, when things quickly took a, a, a turn into lockdown, we, we quickly did a uh, laptops for, for kids scheme where we basically provided any child of, of an Apadme member of staff 
uh, or, or family member with a with a laptop that they could do all their schoolwork on because we see it as really important that all of the the kids could actually get on and do their schoolwork with with a, a computer that was adequate for the job. We also were very uh, flexible in the, in the sense that things were changing so we recognised that some people needed to adapt their working hours to support uh, kids that were either at home or around certain times or splitting it with, with partners and family. So we allowed a much more flexible working uh, time practice so it could be almost any time of the day or night that you wanted to work rather than being focused on originally core hours which which were pretty flexible as a business anyway we, you know we only mandate that the people are available between 12 and 3 30 really for, for during the day and we made that as long as you schedule your meetings and work with your team around that it can be almost any flexible time to focus on on getting the, the work done and that just meant that people had that control because life was turned upside down for a lot of people and we just wanted to turn working hours as something that wasn't in that equation anymore so people can do the work whenever they feel they need to and also not to worry about their, their family so that kids would have all the right equipment to do their, their school work from home uh, and we think that those were important things that we just supported uh, to, to help people. In terms of the productivity and the way that teams have worked there's been some positives and some negatives. We've had to put time and effort into making sure people are aware of their own mental health. That's one of the big concerns around the year is making sure people don't work too much and still take holidays and still take that time off because it's too easy to, to fall into the trap of, well, there's nothing to do, so I'll just work more. And, and that's what we're trying to avoid because we want people to to, to do other things and to switch off as well. And that's that's one of the areas that we've invested in a mindfulness training uh, course for, for staff to be a part of. We've, we've looked at other things, you know, we've been doing a lot around socials and, and team leadership meetings and regular catch-ups with people to allow them to collaborate better within the teams, both about work and, and, and about other things, to get that social interaction going. Productivity has been very good. I think the, there's, there was a, a question mark at first as how would this affect productivity? And, and what you realize quite quickly is that as a business, because we do a lot of things in an agile manner, that everybody knows what they have to do and what they have to deliver, and they have to work together on that anyway, so that they understand what needs to be delivered for the team to succeed. Where we just have to be a little careful is that people don't start working too many hours uh, all the time so that they burn themselves out. The tech sector itself during COVID has been uh, definitely, depending on what sectors you're working in, has been more resilient than many others. Uh, I know some that are focused in the, the marketing and the advertising space have struggled a little bit more where the first things in, when there's a risk or a concern from a lot of people is to, is to suspend marketing budgets because that's one quick thing that you can turn off and so some areas were impacted by that. By us as a technology business that builds technology solutions that helps deliver better results and also uh, build solutions that's going to help the business has been, for us, we've been really resilient to the change and in some ways COVID-19 has, has, has allowed some budgets that previously were planned for the future being brought forward to allow more solutions to be delivered quicker to allow businesses to do a, a di digital transformation. But for the sector as a whole, it's been a positive one in the sense of better for employees' well-being, better for the future of tech in, 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 in the whole, but there's obviously some tech sectors that have taken a real hit, travel being one, gyms, uh, and, and obviously the the, the nighttime community has taken a bit of a hit. Those are, those are things that have been severely impacted, but for the technology sector as a whole, it's, it's been quite resilient. My advice for other leaders for the future is to think about, okay, how can you make sure that in the future that you are able to weather such a storm in the sense of your client base is diversified, you're not wholly in one sector, because in the future, something else may happen 
you know, if, if all of your revenue was based around air travel, then you've got a real problem within your business for, the, for, for now and for the future if it happens again. So a diversified client base uh, and a reduced concentration is, is always a good thing. New technologies for, for next year that are going to be really interesting revolve around things that we've done quite a lot in this year around AR and, and VR. You know, we've been talking about those for, for some time. But I think if I take a step back from that, it's not just about the tech, it's about designing. How do you design and, and create something that's usable and that people want to go back to time and time again? And that's how we've differentiated ourselves as a business, that we build solutions that are compelling for end users to, to want to engage with and use. For next year, the areas that are starting to get really interesting, you start to see that the, the IoT operability is going now into the real home level of things that in the house can be controlled or can work with a mobile device, whether that's your, your home alarm system, working with Alexa, and you know the interesting things that are evolving there around voice assistance are gonna really bring to the forefront in the next 12 to 18 months the new technology capabilities that means you can build more automation, you can build more into your house. But primarily, it's all about making things easier for, for the end user. So somebody who's using whatever device it may be, how can you get them to do what they wanna do quicker, easier, and with, with less effort? So this year for us has been a good year for bringing on board new clients. We've, we've brought on a, a wide range of, of new customers into the business that, that we're working on solutions that are going to be launched very, very soon. We tend not to talk about the new clients until the solutions are launched, but we have a, a wide range there that uh, you'll start to see some of those products come to market. So ones that have just launched, so working with Chelsea Football Club on some of their uh, digital products. Uh, we've got uh, items with, with other clients, with large food distribution companies, uh, uh, home takeaway delivery if you like, that, that will be launched in February, March time next year, and a, and a wide range of retailers uh, and, and other partners. I think this year we've brought on 10 new clients, so that's great for a business like ours in, in times like this to bring on 10 new clients who will hopefully be with us for, for a long time to come. One thing that the pandemic's done this year is made people realise that if they didn't have a digital offering, that they needed to have a digital offering to help them engage with their clients better. When you're in a national lockdown and unless you're an essential food provider and people can't come to your store anymore, if you don't have a solution for that, then you'll have been impacted pretty badly by, by this year's pandemic. So that meant for us that, that budgets were made available for things that were in the next year's roadmap or, or two or three years away. And so for us, what, the, what's, what that's seen is that it's shown that there is always this appetite to do things, but actually that there's a need to do things faster. And also then to, to look at how competitors are doing things, because once you get onto a digital footprint and a digital roadmap, it's all about keeping things relevant and keep pushing forward the boundaries with clients. So we, we do a lot around trying to show innovation and where roadmaps should evolve to, to help drive forward features that help make a business better. So we've worked a lot with, with defining business value for everything that we do with our clients to try and help them look at what is the best thing that they should be doing to return a digital impact for their business. So helping them on that roadmap. One of the key mantras that we repeat to ourselves regularly within Apadme is that the only constant is change. When we started this business, it was four technical people that, that founded a business. And I use the word technical lightly with Howard, one of my co-founders. But we, we started the business with a, a, a look at how can we take four tech developers and build a business forward and what we always saw day one was clients and delivering great products for clients and as we've been on that journey we've we've grown a lot of new areas into the business whether that was initially starting up our ux design practice then building 
QA and quality aspects into the team and you know we look at the growth over the last year where 96% growth of engineering and 150% in our product management teams big growth numbers in areas that that previously were were very small in the in in the business such as the product management and and doubling our engineering capacity and what we're always looking for recently we've launched head of product marketing a real value add to our clients where we help our clients with the launch and the success of their products and with the content strategy and also with the data and the analytics management to understand that full funnel conversion flow from from when somebody searches for an app through to when they perform goals on on the app so full conversion rate optimization within the app to understand best ways of getting to what is important and drives the success of the app for the end client looking back 11 years we didn't have any of these things you know we just had four tech co-founders and started recruiting engineers we're always looking to how do we broaden our services to create better solutions and better products for our clients so what we always know is that what we did yesterday might not be the right thing to do today and what we do today might not be what we do in tomorrow or in three months time we're always looking to improve we embrace change and we look for the good core values that the business was founded on that we're still pushing forward with to to make sure we we adapt and see the opportunities to to create better products and services for our clients so we see that there's lots of of runway left in in the sense of different things we can be offering and a massive growth opportunity within the things that we currently offer the market that we're in is is growing quite fast uh, and yes, we've currently got a, 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 you know, a, a good share of that market in the UK with the largest privately owned uh, mobile focused agency uh, and we, we plan to keep that. We're looking to just expand that growth even more. So the way that the teams come together to help each other from working for home has been nice to see because from a, a mental health point of view, some people have struggled with it. And so team members have rallied around each other where whether it's, you know, some of the things that have been done recently about the just for Christmas, the wreath making or the, the, the fun things we've organised for virtually every Friday since lockdown. We've had something that's tried to lift the spirits a little bit, whether it's a tour of Dracula's castle through to looking at a tour of, uh, I can never pronounce it, Maku Picchu, which in, in uh, you know, and, and, and things around whether it's a, a, a reindeer farm or, or husky dogs or whatever we do to try and get people involved. I think those things that as a team coming together make me very proud that we've got a team that, that does care about each other, does care about what we deliver and, and, and are all looking to, to the good in each other to, to help each other out.